Hey, this is Swoopy, bringing you something a little different, something I'm tempted to call whimsicality. Over at Skepticality, Derek and I are all about critical thinking, reason, science, logic, and especially setting the record straight on absurdities old and new. We report fun and bizarre news that gets left in the dust by big media and comment on a variety of topics that begs our listeners to question what they've read or been told by the mainstream. I love that. It's important. Now, there are organizations out there that spend a good deal of time unraveling ancient myths with glee, taking the light fantastic, and beating it down with a big stick. They're in the business of making people who believe in some of my favorite topics feel like dorks. I actually think you can use the scientific method and tell two-year-olds that Santa is going to bring them presents on Christmas. Without the lighter side of life, what's left? The hard light of day is important. I'm not saying that we should let fluff run rampant and kick science out the window. I think there are benefits to both, and that's what whimsicality is all about. So a couple of times a week, I'm going to take about 20 minutes to talk about fun stuff in the realm of fantasy, the bizarre, perhaps the morbid and creepy too. Does this mean I believe that aligning my chakras is better for my body than doing a little cardio? No way. I've never had a chakra help me fit into my genes, but that doesn't mean I'm above seeing what it's all about. So if you want to loosen your brain a little, let the crazy in there. Stay tuned for Whimsicality, where nonsensical crap is fun. So today we're going to talk about the power of rock. Rocks have held power in ancient religions and cultures since forever. And in fact, as a general rule, we seem to revere rocks as sacred and important things. Mountains to be climbed and conquered, stones are erected as monuments, even gravestones mark where we end up. Before paper, history was put on stone. Cave paintings, stone tablets, revered artifacts often made of rock, and these are everywhere. Some created by man, some created by nature. Some, I've heard people think, were created by beings greater than ourselves. That's a skepticality topic, and I'm staying away from it. The pyramids, the Roman Colosseum, the megalithic heads of Easter Island, the Washington Monument even. We like rocks, and we've got plenty of them. We live in them, we climb them, we burn them, we rub them and kiss them, we make them our pets. And some of the ones we wear, we place an obscene amount of value on. Do they hold any special power that can change the way we think or improve our health? Unlikely, but that isn't to say that we don't feel something because of them. One of the most notorious group of rocks is Stonehenge. It's the best known of the many stone circles in the British Isles. Considered a sacred place, upon one of those mysterious ley lines linking sacred sites in that area, it's likely that Stonehenge was used to mark time and astrological events such as eclipses. The cycle of the sun and the moon can be tracked by following a concentric circle of holes around the henge. It functions as a giant stone calendar and a party spot. This year, the English heritage will once again allow visitors to Stonehenge for a celebration of the longest day of the year, the summer solstice. Will the site be infused with metaphysical energy? I can't really say. Infused with a lot of beer? Yeah, that's almost a certainty. Although we think of sacred stones as being... In more far-flung regions of the world, there are plenty of special rocks in North America, too. Last year, I was in Hawaii and went to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. There wasn't any lava flow that day, so we didn't make a beeline to the mountain. We stopped and walked a little, over a mile, on an undulating plain of scrub and stones to see the petroglyphs. The sun was beating down on the rough volcanic rock, and I stood there, sweating, looking at the carved-out pictures of men and turtles and circles, indicating the families that had lived there hundreds of years ago. Pu'uloa, which is near Kilauea, is still considered a sacred space. And as I stood there, in the dead quiet, feeling like just about the only person on Earth, I started crying like a baby. I was just very moved by being faced with the history and mortality of the human race as a strong and resilient people that not only survived in such an unforgiving, albeit devastatingly beautiful environment, but that it was important to them to preserve their history on the rocks. I hadn't expected to feel like that, and it freaked me out a little bit. It wasn't like I was looking at a huge monolith devoted to mankind or a statue of the human ideal. There were just these pictures and patterns scratched deep in this harsh stone where people were just living, not trying to extol their greatness, just trying to say, hey, we were here, this is who we were. And they succeeded because... I was standing there, seeing it. Some would posit that I cried because I was overwhelmed by the metaphysical and spiritual energy that this sacred space possesses. 
Yes, my spirit was moved, but because of the power of humanity, not because of the divine energy imbued in the stones. There are people out there who make their living, and I'm sure they truly believe that the power possessed by this place can be channeled by them and that the energy can be used for mental and physical healing. If standing there and breathing in the peace and quiet makes you feel better, maybe holding someone's hand and passing it on, and I imagine it would, as long as you were wearing sunscreen, I think that's great. I'm all for it. Shame on you, though, if you expect people to pay you money for introducing them to that experience. Now, there's a legend in Hawaii that says the goddess Pele will punish those who take anything from her. If you take stones or anything natural from the island, you'll be cursed with bad luck until you return to Pele what you stole. Am I a critical thinker that uses reason and logic to help me decide what is true in the world? Yes. Did I so much as nudge a rock or fondle a plant in Hawaii? Hell no. Why would a Hawaiian rock want to go live in Georgia anyway? So, do rocks have power? I think they do. They have the power to inspire us, to humble us, and even crush us. Can they make you stronger? Only if you're lifting really heavy ones on a regular basis. Will they cure cancer and improve your digestion? Not as far as we know, and I definitely wouldn't suggest eating them. I guess the one thing we do know for sure is that the most important rock is the one we live on. This is Swoopy. And for now, rock on. Thank you.